Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Greg here again uh, with another kit review of the Ming Mark A Whippet. It's going to be a, a buddy build between me and Joe, Joe's from Joe's model kits. We just fancy doing a uh, First World War tank, obviously, to celebrate the, well, to celebrate sort of for the 100 years since it uh, ended on the 11th of the 11th. So we thought we'd have a go at one of these. So. That's our further let's have a look what we've got. So it's the Mark IV, Mark A Whippets, British British medium tank, Mark A, and it's part of the Tyrannosaurus Rex um, kits from Meng. Nice nice artwork. Nice artwork. That's that is the front and the rear is the is at the back with all the guns. It's a strange looking thing. You would have, you would have thought it would be the other way around, but it's not. That's the the front as you're looking onto it. Nice artwork, so it's a 135 scale and on the other side we have a bit of information about it. I'm going to pause and read that. And then we have the colour call out for AK. I don't really use a lot of AK stuff, but especially the paints, but we'll see what we've got in there. I'm sure I've got most of them. And on the other end we have the same picture and the kit number which is TS0, sorry, TS-021 and on this side again we have a bit of information again on the Whippet bit of info there, if you want to pause and read that and then we have a colour call out for the uh, B Company 6th Battalion Tank Corps, British Army May 1918, that's it. 1918, yep. So without further ado, let's do what I normally do. Let's take the lid off and see what we've got underneath. Plenty of plastic in there, so we shall start off obviously as it comes out of the box. So that's what we've got. like all the running gear by the looks of this. Yeah these are all the wheels and things you can see how small the wheels are. There's a cogging chain on that one there and there's some toe eyes gear for the cables and there's some these look like obviously the sprockets and the running gear and say so there's multiple wheels, multiple of these little wheels. Nicely detailed. Yeah, so you can see the detail on those quite nice and fine. No flash, no injection marks, lots of bits and pieces. The majority of these are wheels and uh, return rollers and things. So we have two sprues like that. So let's know what that part is. Is that a part of um, the barrel or something? Who knows? You see that one's fine there. It's, must, be, must be one of the barrels. Kind of a barrel because there's no barrels on this, it's only machine guns. Interesting to see what they are when we get to the uh, destructions. So the next screws are part of the lower hull again. So we have the side skirt and other bits and pieces, exhausts. That's the outside, which is a lovely detail on there. Really nice, lovely rivet, rivet details. There's the exhaust grab handle, some of the bits and pieces, there's the other side. Spanner of some description. Part of the superstructure by looking at it. But really, really nice detail. Really nice. And on the rear obviously you got the you got the where the wheels all seem to sit in there, injection marks there, but you're never gonna see them. That's irrelevant them, it doesn't really matter about those, you're not gonna see them. The same with the other ones, you're not going to really see any of them because they're uh, all on the inside. But lovely detail, I do like men kits, I must admit they are nice, they do produce some lovely kits. The detail is, is really nice there. Uh, like bolt features then, uh, like a nut and bolt, not a nut and bolt, a latch and bolt on those, or oh, something. I'm too, I'm too sure on those little pieces there. But whatever they are, they're nicely detailed. Right, so let's move on to the next group. 
again is part of the uh, blow hold that encases together. And again, it's the detail again, it's just the same as the. Uh, so this is the one that faces the inside that goes on. These are these are for these on. These go into the main hole. And you're going to see them. And again, that's where all the wheels sit and go in there. And the injection marks again. You're never going to see because they're all on the inside. And I think these must be part of a superstructure. Not too sure, but nicely detailed again. Nice little. Uh, like well lines but I wouldn't presume they are and they're not like bolted together I would think. Nicely detailed again. So that's uh, yeah really nice. I like the colours to work with as well it's gonna be nice colours to work with that. I think sand yellow and then we uh, have the superstructure. There's not a great deal of parts in the kit. But, uh, it's not a large it's not a large uh, tank by any by any means, but it looks a nicely detailed little kit. So yeah, this is all the part. That must be the lower hull. Oh, look at the nice details on these parts. Yeah, this is all the superstructure. Really, really nice detail. Really nice. for all the machine guns to go through and again all lovely detailed see if it's building up quite an impressive little kit I don't think it would be a, a long build the build itself might not be long but uh, it's when you start doing your paint work and your weathering and whatever else you want to do with it then that takes a bit of time and effort but there again all the injection marks you're never going to see so Nothing to be worried about. Really nice crisp detail. I do like that. I do like that in the kit. Well, I wouldn't expect anything else from Meng to be perfectly honest. And then we have uh, the upper hull. And there's a piece of string there for uh, the tow cable, tow cable mm -hmm. which I can get. I can get it to make it look like it's real, but it uh, takes a bit of effort. But it's not too bad. I'm going to say it's nice like a bathtub hole, but it's, it's, it's the upper hole. Look at the detail again. Look at the engine compartments and things. It's a pity, you know, if you were to make a kit with the actual engine in, it would be interesting to see a, uh, a whippet with a, a full engine and compartment inside. That's for the superstructure to go into. In the front, there's more detail to go on the front of the box and whatever. The armor protection for the, uh, I presume it's a fuel drum, I think it's just the fuel. These are underneath the fuel behind that uh, face there, would have been the fuel, which has been armor protected. But yeah, lovely detail again, and it's, it looks like a simple kit to put together. Um, but there's only one way to find out, is obviously to build it. So that's another little sprue, and then we have a small sprue with some quite delicate little bits, and I think it's the machine guns and Little bits and yeah, it's, a, it's the ball mountings and the machine guns, and yeah, all well, the other thing is the Lewis machine guns, not too sure they changed them. But, uh, yeah, the ammo belts as well to go, to go on them, and there's the ball and socket to go to put the machine gun in. So there's two sprues exactly the same. So we have four, got four machine guns, and the machine guns are quite nice, and I think they're probably. Might be able to do a um, an end piece in. Not too sure. I have to see. I don't think I'll be able to do that fine. But uh, it's a shame. But you can't have everything, can you? Right. And I've been reading online that these tracks on the next screw are all and they're clickable. They just linked together. No glue needed. So this time we can't yeah, take the time of taking them off the uh, off the sprues. And there we have three points on each on each one. So not much detail, obviously there wasn't a lot of detail on the tracks in these days, there's all the bolt heads. And underneath we have uh, there's a pin mark in there, but you're never gonna see all these because of the uh, 
side skirt and everything you're going to it's just going to be completely covered up you know not to worry about those if you really want to take them out there's no reason why you can't but apparently these just clip clip together which should be interesting and they stay together apparently as well so that'll make a a lot of difference. So there's three sprues like that, all identical. Nice, nice. Uh, you see, I'll probably do a build log of this eventually when I get around to building, which is hopefully very, very shortly. I say I think Joe might be starting these today. I said I'll play catch up. And then we have the decals, which are in a nice resealable bag. And we have. So we can get them out in one, in one go. So we have uh, markings for the German, Russian and obviously English as well. Nice details. Shiny but there's not much carrier film around the edges at all. And they actually they're actually made by wet Meng as well, so I've had no problems with Meng details before. Decal sorry, but uh, yeah. And it's a nice selection of what you want to do. So I'll just pop those back in the bag so we don't uh, get them damaged anywhere. I shall pop those back in there if I can. There we go, in we go. There we go. And then finally we have the decals, oh, sorry, the, the instructions which is in a lovely book format. Cracking picture on the front again of the, uh, the whippet. So let's have a look what we've got inside. The first page is just a bit of information again on the uh, the whippet. Obviously this is all in Japanese and Chinese I think, I'm not sure. And then we have it in English and we have it in more Japanese or Chinese of information. And the thick pages and then when we get to the actual part and bit of the kit now is what you're going to need and this, that and the other, and get your markings for A and B. What does it say? There are two options for this model as shown in the drawings. Please select one of the options before assembly and refer to the paint scheme for details. So, I'm going to have to can read that when we get to it. And obviously there's the upper hole starting to... Uh, there's the shield on the front to protect the uh, field rooms. Bits and pieces on here and then we're starting to build up the main hull, sort of the main uh, fighting compartment. Where all the uh, machine guns are placed, right at the rear of the tank. And they're carrying on with this. There's quite a lot of all angles and unusual shapes and sizes to be to be uh, to be made into that. And then on step five, we have that completed shape to be put onto the hull. And then we have a few plates, grab handles, and that to add to the top of that. And again, we have the lower hull. Sorry, the uh, the the very bottom of the hull to be added to that. I think I'll probably do it the way around. I put the lower hull on first and then I put the superstructure on, I think, just to be difficult. And then we're starting off here with some more, more of the upper hull stuff. Grab handles, uh, I think these must be track, you know, tracks, or the vents and things from the engine, and the machine guns in the ball mounts and the colours for them. Obviously, A1 and A4. I think that's the shape to go for. Yeah, this is for your your front. The front of it again. Like I said, about protecting the field drums and things. So that's only six steps, and that's basically put together really. And six. And then we're starting to put all the wheels together. You have ten of those, ten of the return uh, return rollers, ten road wheels, so eighteen times road wheels, and fourteen road wheels. So there's slightly different sizes. And then we have the uh, the idler wheel and the drive sprocket, which through the chain and the sprocket on the outside. And then we're starting to put them onto the sides of the uh, the lower hull on the wheels. Put thread onto them things onto the onto them. You know the uh, so there won't be no glue needed for those if you want it to have a movable track so it'll be quite nice if they do if they do snip together. 
and that's just showing you the very bottom obviously the different size road wheels there we have that one's different, that one's different, there's quite a few different ones so just be careful when you're assembling those and then again we're putting the return rollers on the inside and this is that's yeah this is the uh, land running left running gear assembly so in case it's in top of there so this is what you see from the inside you know you look as if you were looking into the tank this is the outside there we are so I mean there if you're looking at there so you see just the plates going up there you don't see a gap of any description which is nice and then we have the um, left running gear assembly again and then presumably we have the mirror image again doing the right right assembly which is true and then you finish up with three, three full sections you've got the main hole and the two running gears with the uh, things which are then replaced onto those it's a uh, nice little kit I shall be looking forward to building this very very soon I'll have to build it in conjunction with what I've already got on and then we're saying about the tracks it says attaching the tracks so it's just basically uh, yeah you've got 68 links each side and they just snap together apparently no glue needed and then we have I think it's not too sure. Is that the uh, grousers that you put on there? Yeah, on the front. Yeah, cable, and then on the side, and then obviously they've got the tow cable. And that's the end of the build. And then we have a sprue map. I often find the sprue maps better at the front, but there you go. That's me. And then there's one option there. That's the option for the B Company Six Battalion Tank Corps, British Army, May 1918, preserved in the Royal Museum of Armed forces and military history in Belgium that. So that's one option. This is the other option again, is it, is it the same one? Oh, that's, that's the same one, you have to there. It's called Firefly, so I, I might do that one. And this one is the uh, 3rd Light Battalion Tank Corps British Army August 1918 preserved in the Tank Museum in the UK presumably meaning Bovington one would presume so that's from there to there and then I will paint the colour call outs and then is that it? And this one's for German markings as well somewhere no. No. I can't see where the German markings are going to be then if you wanted to do the German or the Russians. I missed it. Quite thick pages, so I'll probably have. No. No. It doesn't matter anyway, because I'll be doing the British version anyhow. And I can't. Uh... Well, that's one thick page, isn't it? Never mind. Never mind. Maybe I'm missing out something, but they're fairly straightforward. Nice little build to commemorate at the end of the First World War 100 years ago. Yes, yeah, so it would be a nice little build that I'm looking forward. I might do a little, just a little vignette for it. Not a, not a massive thing, just a small, a small vignette. Very similar to what's on the box work there, on the artwork there. A bit of ground and things like that. So, all in all, a nice little kit and a reasonable price. I think 24 quid, I think it was. It wasn't a massive price. A relatively new kit, well, relatively, relatively new, it must be only a couple of years old, I would have thought. Nothing any any older than that. I wouldn't have thought, let's have a look on the box, let me just see if I can, if I can see here. I always forget about checking the date, let me just move them off there. Let's see if there's a date on the box. Two thousand and seventeen. So you say it is a new kit, but a nice little kit as well. So that's the end of the uh, Mark A Whippet inbox review. So I'm looking forward to building it. And I'll say I'll probably do a little build log of this one as well as I'm as I'm getting along. So this is Greg signing off. I say I'd like to thank all my subscribers, the old and new. We're flying along at the moment. Can't believe, can't believe it. But uh, thank you very much. So. I'll sign off here and we'll see you very, very soon.